This is not financial advice. I'm recording my thoughts about how I value a stock. I'm going to use Microsoft stock valuation as an example. The valuation technique that I use is very simple. It's not going to be a huge spreadsheet. It's just going to be a small calculation that I do. I plan to keep it under 10 minutes and depending on the questions in the comments, I will make further videos explaining this valuation in greater detail. As a first step, I'm going to show you the formula that I use. It's a simple formula. Stock price is equal to net profit times the multiple divided by the number of shares. Net profit and multiple are the two numbers that are in the numerator. So the higher those numbers are, the better it is for the stock price. Number of shares is in the denominator. So we prefer a smaller number of shares to get a better stock price. Typically, I do a valuation five years out. Since we are in early 2023, I estimate stock price in 2027, which is almost five years out. So if I want to calculate the stock price in 2027, I need three numbers. Number one is the net profit in 2027. The second number I want is the multiple in 2027. And the third number I want is the number of shares in 2027. If I have these three numbers, I can plug those three numbers in this formula and I can get a stock price estimate in 2027. Now let me show you a sample calculation using Microsoft. As you can see on my screen, net profit is calculated by the numbers that are in the red box. To calculate it, we start with 2022 revenue. 2022 revenue for Microsoft is about $198 billion. So how do I get this number? There are a number of websites available on the internet where you can get that number. But personally, I use stockanalysis.com. You have to go to stockanalysis.com and then search for MSFT, which is a ticker for Microsoft. As you can see on the screen, I put a red arrow and highlighted it in yellow. The revenue for 2022 is $198 billion. So the same number was input into this spreadsheet that I have. Now we move on to the next number, which is estimated growth rate. I put 15%. So how did I come up with this 15%? For why 15%? Why not 20? Why not 55? Why not 65? Why not 90%? Right? So there has to be a reasoning behind why I come up with that number. To come up with that estimated growth rate number, I typically first look at its past performance. Again, I go to stockanalysis.com and then I go to the financials tab. As you can see, I have highlighted it. The revenue growth in the past five years has been in the teens. 17% in 2022, 17% in 2021, 13% in 2020, 14% in 2019, and 2018 it was 14%, right? So, the revenue growth rate in the past few years has been in the teens. So obviously I cannot estimate a 60% growth rate or 70%. So it has to be in the teens now, unless something changed drastically with the business model. So now that I have a history of its past five year growth, I now move on to its business model. I do know that Microsoft has three different revenue segments. Azure, the cloud is actually growing north of 25%. And their gaming sector and personal computing sector is in the single digits. It's actually not even growing. And the third one, which is the Office 360, it's growing in the double digits. Since there is a huge growth driver, cloud, which is almost one third of their business, growing faster than 25%, I can comfortably assume teens growth in the next few years too, because the cloud is not stopping anytime soon. In addition to the business model, I also pay attention to the management's guidance. Typically, the management gives guidance of their growth for the current financial year and also for the future. If you listen closely to the calls, they are also hinting at teens to 20% growth rate in the next few years. For me, I want to be conservative, so I will put 15%, which I think is reasonable. So now that I have this 15% revenue growth rate, I will move on to 2027 revenue. As you can see, I got $398 billion of revenue in 2027 using the 2022 growth rate of $198 billion and estimated growth rate of 
me show you how I got this $398 billion in 2027. As you can see on the screen, it's a simple math calculation. 2027 revenue is equal to 2022 revenue times one plus estimated growth rate to the power of five. Since 2027 is five years away from 2022, I put that to the power five. I've also shown you the sample calculation. When I multiply 198 with one plus 0.15 to the power of five, I get $398 billion of revenue in 2027. This is an estimate because this is sometime in the future. Obviously it can be higher than 398 billion or lower than 398 billion, but I think 398 billion seems like a rough estimate that I can believe in. Now we have two more entries left in that red box. Assumed net profit margin percentage. Note that this is not a gross margin or operating margin. This is actually net profit margin. Net profit is the money left with the company after they have paid for all the operating expenses and taxes, etc. So this is a better indicator for a company's profitability than gross, mar gross profit or operating profit. So I go with net profit margin. I put 35%, right? So how did I get this number? Again, I go back to the stockanalysis.com where it is showing the profit margin for the past four years. For the past four years, as you can see on the screen, the profit margin is in the order of 30% plus. In the most recent year, it's about 36.69%. So for me, 35% for Microsoft is reasonable. Um, to actually get confidence in that number, you have to also understand their business model. But for me, I'm not going to go into those details. I'm just going to look at the past few year performance and Microsoft has a huge moat and they are going to be the go-to company for most of the B2B products. So I'm going to keep the net profit margin at 35%. Now let's move on to the last number, 2027 net income or net profit, which is the number that we need. We get that number by multiplying the 2027 revenue with the assumed net profit margin of 35%. Let me show you a sample calculation. In 2027, the net income would be about $139 billion. And I came up with that by multiplying the revenue in 2027, which is 398 billion with 35% net profit margin. So $139 billion is the net profit in 2027. And that is the first number that I need for use in the formula that I have. The next number is the multiple. In my opinion, if you understand multiple, you pretty much understand valuation because it is a very difficult number to come up with because multiple is the premium that you pay for a company. So it's determined by the market in general and it's a premium that you pay per $1 profit a company generates. For example, if you pay a multiple of 10, it means that every $10 you invest in the company, you get $1 per year back. In a way, it takes about 10 years for you to break even in such a case, assuming that the profit is going to stay constant for the next 10 years. For the multiple, typically I take an average of the estimated growth rate and the net profit margin. In this case, estimated growth rate is 15% and the net profit margin is 35%. If I take an average of that, 15 plus 35 over two, that's 25. So 25 is a fair multiple for Microsoft, but since this company has a great moat, I have to pay a little bit more premium. Instead of 25, I have to pay 27.5 because a lot of people would love to own Microsoft and are willing to pay a little bit more than this fair multiple. So that's why I assigned 27.5. So now we have the two numbers that are required for the stock price determination, which are the net profit margin and the multiple. Now let's get to the number of shares. To determine the number of shares, I can use one of the formulas that I'm showing on the screen. If there is a buyback, I will use the first formula. If there is a dilution, I use the second formula that I'm showing on the screen. How do I know whether Microsoft will buy back or dilute shareholders? Because the formula that I use depends on what they're planning to do. 
For that, I'm going to go back to stockanalysis.com and see what they've done for the past few years with the profit that they make. As you can see on the screen, in 2019, they had 7.75 billion outstanding shares. And in 2022, they have 7.5 billion outstanding shares. There's a decrease in the number of outstanding shares, which means that they are buying back the shares. If there's an increase, it means that they are diluting the shareholders. And if there is a decrease, they are buying back the shares and you also see the share change, which is almost close to negative 1%, right? But in my calculation, I actually assume 2% buyback. The reason for this is when a company makes a lot of profit, it has to do something with that profit, right? Either give it to the shareholders in the form of dividends or buyback shares or otherwise acquire another company to boost its growth and profitability. Microsoft wanted to buy Activision Blizzard, I think for about $80 billion. But since that deal is not going through, they have that cash lying on their balance sheet. So they have to do something with it, right? So in my opinion, it's very hard for Microsoft to acquire more and more companies because of the antitrust loss. So I'm assuming that they're going to buy back shares to make use of that profit. So that's why I'm assuming 2% buyback and I'm going to use the formula one. So I came up with that 6.779 billion outstanding shares. That's because I use the formula that I'm showing on the screen. I multiply 7.5 billion, which is the current number of outstanding shares. And I multiply with one minus 0 0.02. That represents the 2% buyback to the power five because I am estimating this five years out. So that's going to give me 6.779 billion outstanding shares. Now we're almost done. We have the three numbers that we needed to calculate the stock price in 2027. First number, like I said, in the formula, net profit in 2027, that's $139 billion. The second number is the multiple. I'm showing 27.5 multiple. I have explained how I determined that. And I divide that with 6.779 billion outstanding shares. With that, I can get a $565 stock price as I have shown on the screen. This finishes the valuation. I'm estimating $565 stock price in 2027. A personal journey, I'm looking for a 2x in five years. So if I'm estimating $565 in 2027, if I need a 2x, the stock price has to be at $283. That's when I get a 2x, right? If I buy the stock at $283, I can get a 2x or double my money in five years because I'm estimating it can get to $565. And if you want a 50% gain, you would be okay with paying a little bit more. When I did this video, the stock was at $303. From $303 to $565 in five years represents about 87% gain, which I was not satisfied with. I needed a 2x in five years. There you go. That's how I do valuation of a stock using its fundamentals and the formula that I have shown, which is stock price equals to net profit margin times the multiple divided by the number of outstanding shares. Please ask me some questions in the comments for me to get more ideas of what to explain in detail in my future videos of valuation. Thank you so much for watching.